right, that's how we're going to start class every day. Um, we're doing fitness for older adults this morning. And when I say good morning, you say? Good morning. Good morning. That is your cue that we are ready to start class and we need to get fit. Um, my name is Mary Kate, and this is Caitlin and Dash. What are we <laughs> and we are super excited about getting into fitness for older adults. It's a little bit different than what we're used to, but uh, it's very applicable to what we're going to be uh, doing later on in life as well as now, as we are college students. But uh, before we can begin class, we must enter the time warp. And we're going to warp to 2060, we're going to become senior citizens, our muscles are going to degenerate, our range of motion is going to decrease, and we're going to become older adults for real. Okay? So ready? <gasps> about the movement challenges and impairments 
it a lot of times because of mental degeneration, but that can also lead to injuries. And so there are many different challenges for many different reasons. So we're going to kind of explore that. And we're also going to explore uh, exercises and movements to prevent those injuries, to prevent muscle atrophy, to prevent um, the muscle degeneration, to increase range of motion and maintain your muscle strength. Uh, we also want uh, to incorporate our heart rates. So we're going to measure, we're going to learn how to take our heart rate, learn how to measure it and use that number to determine our max heart rate because cardiovascular strength is a huge issue as well uh, when it comes to heart disease other things that older adults face. As Caitlin said, we're going to do uh, our ultimate goals, we're going to call them, the daily activity, or activities of daily living. So like she said, sitting in a chair, standing up, taking your shirt off over your head, uh, walking up and down the stairs, things of this sort. And we also want to ultimately gain an appreciation for the aging body. I know we've kind of brought it as a fun uh, silly thing because we can't fully understand it as college students, but we're really going to try to engage and gain an appreciation and understanding for our bodies as they will get older, inevitably. So today, as you can see on the course outline, we're going to do safety, we're going to talk about, uh, we've talked about older adults, and we're going to go into balance exercises, and that's what we're going to focus on today because that's going to be our, our foundation for the rest of our classes together. So like I said, obviously, we're 20 something year old college students, we don't really know all of the challenges that older adults face, so we're going to really ask you guys to engage, and um, while we're in class, you know, support each other, help each other, respect each other, and of course, safety. Let's talk about safety for a moment. As we said, uh, older adults can, because of their weak bodies, weaker, weak knees, weaker, all those bodies, uh, they fall, they can you know, lose their balance, roll ankles, break hips. We don't want any of that in this class. So if you feel like you're in an exercise or you might fall over, you know, time warp real quick, real quick back and uh, adjust your body to the scene. But then also engage and think about, you know, how perhaps an older adult might not have been able to do that or what their consequence might have been and how you were able to make adjustments to your body. Um, we're also going to be going outside sometimes. So when we do so, there's cars driving around, there's people, other classes probably. So just be respectful and avoid the distractions. Don't be a distraction to other people. Follow direction and engage in our activities. We're going to use these bars on the walls a lot. We're mainly going to use this wall and the ocean wall. That way, that's the mountain wall. But we'll mainly use these ones because I think we can fit on here. And so uh, definitely use this for balance, for technique, for um, uh, not falling over and hurting yourself. And also our exercises are going to progress from really super simple, you're going to think this is really, really easy, um, and then we're going to build up. And so don't jump to the next level until you are super comfortable and you have the technique and the form down of the lower levels. So that is for safety. Let's get started. Now we're learning about heart rate. Everyone has a heart that pumps blood. You can use that. So what we're going to measure is heart rate is how fast your heart is pumping. There's two places that you can measure it easily, the carotid artery in the neck and the radial artery in the wrist. So we're going to start off by taking it in the radial artery. Um, take your index finger and your middle finger, place them between your ear and your jawbone. So right there, and you're going to slide down a little bit and shift forward so your fingers are kind of right under your jawbone and feel around until you can feel your pulse. Does everyone feel the pulse? Okay, now I'm going to time you for 30 seconds and then what I need you to do is count how many beats you feel and then we're going to multiply that by two so that we have it for the whole minute. So, on my count, go and count how many beats you have. Ready, go. Five more seconds. Okay, and stop. So everyone has the number. 
number of these they felt. Now multiply that number by two. You had to work with a little bit of math. Okay, so now you have, that's your resting heart rate. You're, seating, you're seated. You're not doing any strenuous activity yet. So that's your, your resting heart rate. We're also going to um, feel for it in your wrist so that if you weren't able to feel it in your neck, you can do it in your wrist also. When we're exercising, if you feel more comfortable taking your heart rate from your wrist, so if you're not, you know, don't close off your airway from pushing too hard, we're going to find it in your wrist. So with your palm facing you, once again, take your index finger and your middle finger and put them just below the base of your thumb and apply slight pressure because it's going to be a little bit harder to feel it farther away from your heart. Has everyone found the pulse? You got it? Okay, I'm going to time it for 30 seconds again. Make sure to remember to count on my count. Ready, go. One more second. So it's going to be really helpful to know our heart rate so that we can Tell how um, strenuous our activity is. We need to increase or decrease intensity. And stop. Okay, so you have your number of beats of 30 seconds again. Multiply that by two. So we have beats per minute, which is what heart rate is measured in. So now we have our resting heart rate, but what good is that? We know what it is when we're sitting. Um, as we age, our mass heart rate decreases because our muscle. The muscles in our hearts aren't quite as strong to pump the blood. So for max heart rate, we're going to do 220 minus our age. And so if we're in 2060, how old would we be? Back. Oh. Yeah, it's 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're all going to be around 71 for 21 at 50 years. So if we're 71, what would our max heart rate be? So do 220. Minus 71. Are you sure about that? Final answer? <laughs> yes. Okay. So our max heart rate is 149. We don't want to, we obviously don't want to work out at max heart rate because our bodies would not be able to keep up with us. So the intensity that we're going to aim for, um, our target heart rate is going to be like 60 to 75 percent of that. So we'll be exercising at about 112 beats per minute. So we'll be taking our heart rate throughout the lessons and needing so that we can gauge if we need to increase or decrease our um, activity level. And now, okay, we're gonna start, we're gonna shift into a warm up. What I want all of you guys to do is get up and spread yourselves out along this bar. And that bar, we have more flow. You're still just gonna go 